Hi friends, thank you so much for being here. Today's video is going to be an updated cruelty-free guide for Ulta. I'm definitely more of an Ulta rather than Sephora kind of gal and I've already done one of these and I will link it somewhere in the cards. But I did want to do an update because my tastes have changed and some of those products that I mentioned in last year's video I have changed my mind about. So if there's any products that you know that I like that aren't in this video, it's because I don't want to be repetitive and I do just want to spotlight some different products. But for the most part, the products that I shared in last year's video, I still like. I created this look using a lot of the products I'm going to be talking about today. If you want to know my updated cruelty-free guide for Ulta, then let's timestamps will be down below just like last year's video. And also like last year's video, I'm going to be sharing my favorite cruelty-free brands. In last year's video, I kind of just named off a bunch of cruelty free brands not necessarily my favorites but for this year i do just want to spotlight my favorite cruelty free brands so in alphabetical order starting off with about face ardell colourpop elf cosmetics it cosmetics la girl milani natasha denona nyx professional makeup physicians formula poppy and pout rem beauty real techniques Seishu, Ulta Beauty Collection, which is their in-house brand, Undone Beauty, and Urban Decay. I am going to be going in order of how I apply makeup, but I do just want to give a shout out to two products that I didn't showcase slash didn't use. So first with Poppy and Pout, they do lip products. That's the only thing that they've done so far, and I have their Island Coconut Lip Balm. This is a super natural only like five ingredients simple lip balm and i've had this for almost a year and i still have quite a bit left you push from the bottom it does have a very light scent it's nothing overpowering this is just a good classic lip balm and then my favorite lash glue i did use this today but i didn't show me using it and it is the duo lash glue with vitamins in the green packaging this is the only lash glue that i will ever use it's my favorite starting with primers of course one of my favorite primers is this elf power grip plus four percent niacinamide that is what i went in with today while i was doing my eyeshadow because i do like to let this sit this is really good for longevity. I'm sure most of you guys already know that. But one con I do want to point out this product is that with certain foundations, it can be finicky. And I really do recommend to let this sit on the skin for a couple of minutes before going in. Because sometimes it can get like really patchy and make your foundation lift off. So this works really well with water-based foundations. Foundations that are like serum foundations or have glycerin in it. But with certain foundations that have oils in them, this does not work well with it. Another face primer that I don't currently have, but this was in my top makeup of 2023, I believe. It is the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer. This is a primer I recommend for those of you who want something smoothing, specifically in this area where we have larger pores. It does fill in just like a little bit. I wouldn't say like it's a pore filling primer. It does mattify a little bit, but it at the same time, it's hydrating and it's silicone free, which if you're like me and you're really nitpicky about ingredients, that is something that's very important to me. So that is still a favorite. And then of course my Milani eyeshadow primer. I've talked this one to death so I won't say much. This is just my favorite eyeshadow primer of all time. I do want to point out I also do like the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. However, this one is three times cheaper but it comes with three times as much product. Moving on to eyeshadow, I am wearing the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette. I thoroughly enjoy my experience with this palette every single time. It is expensive, but in my opinion, you are paying for that luxury formula with eyeshadows. And for me, a luxury eyeshadow, the way that I can tell that it is that high level quality 
is when you go in with a little amount, you get a different depth than when you go in with a lot. I know that kind of sounds like, duh, like, but a lot of drugstore eyeshadows don't do that. So the more that you build with these eyeshadows, the more depth you get. So you can just use one eyeshadow and depending on how much you put on, you are going to get a different look. Whereas I find with a lot of other eyeshadows, no matter how much you put on, it always looks the same and sometimes they over blend and they blend away. And I really do like how the mattes in this palette, when you mix the mattes with each other, they do blend well together to create different colors. So today, for instance, I started off with Stone, this matte, and later on I added Vague, this pinkier matte, and when you combine the colors, they truly do form a different color. The mattes are more firmly pressed, um, especially if you compare them to like Anastasia Beverly Hills, they are more firm firmly pressed pressed but they are pigmented and just like a little bit powdery if you really go in but more firmly pressed than like a lot of other eyeshadows this is one of my favorite eyeshadows of all time it's called muse constantly gravitate towards this shimmer all of these shimmers are different some are satin some are more of like the toppers some are like super sparkly with a base there's just a lot of variety in here and so I do think that it is worth the price because you are getting a variety of textures and the quality is there I did also want to mention an eyeshadow stick so the ones that I've really been liking this year are again from ColourPop. They're the ColourPop Shadow Sticks. I have already demoed and swatched these and a lot of these products, if not all of them, you can go to my main page on my channel, go to the search bar and type in the product and you will find a ton of content of me using these products. So if you just want to see them more in action, definitely go into the search bar and type in anything that you're looking for and you will find content on these. So they are a thicker texture. So I do just want to mention that they are a thicker texture. If you're familiar with the Nabla Cupid's Arrow Stylo Pens, these are thicker than that. They're not like uncomfortable. It's not like over bearing but some people might not like that they do create a very good like sticky base they don't feel sticky like if you just put these on by themselves you don't need to set them with powder they're not going to make your eyelids stick to each other or be uncomfortable but you can definitely tell when you're applying these shadow sticks that they are a thicker texture but these are just so easy and they do make a really good base if you want to put any kind of matte shadow or shimmer on top. If you are of a deep or rich complexion, honestly, these recommendations, a lot of them aren't going to work for you um, when it comes to eyeshadow. Like these shadow sticks, like these colors don't go deep enough, I think, to show on your skin tone. And for Natasha Denona, I would say the only two palettes I feel like could possibly work for you would be the Retro or My Dream. I would completely skip out on I Need a Nude. Even on me, it comes across as really cool toned and I'm only a medium olive complexion. Juvia's Place, they are the only cruelty free brand that does eyeshadows that I feel like are rich and deep enough for you. However, I haven't personally tried Juvia's Place um, because of morals. They've just been in a couple of scandals, so I am not really sure if I'm ever going to support them, but I do just want to highlight them that. I think that is definitely the way to go if you are of that complexion and you're looking for eyeshadows, especially neutrals, but they also just have like deep, rich, colorful eyeshadows that would show up on your skin tone. Next is eyeliner. So I have two liquid eyeliners and one gel eyeliner to recommend starting off with my favorite eyeliner. This is a new favorite, but honestly just beats every other eyeliner I've ever tried, even my KVD tattoo liner. And it is the Urban Decay Ergonomic Liquid Eyeliner. I just have the black shade and I did use this in my last video. So if you want to see this in action and see just how quick you can get your wings, go check out that last video. This also works so well on the inner corner. And the only other eyeliner that works both on the lid and the inner corner for like the inner corner wing is the KVD Tattoo Liner, but that one can be a little bit dry. And then next is my favorite drugstore liquid eyeliner. I've purchased at least two of these 
and I would definitely consider repurchasing again. And it is the NYX Epic Ink. This is a super black matte formula. The only con with this one is I don't recommend this on the inner corner if you like to do that inner corner wing because I do find that it bleeds. It is a brush tip and I do prefer brush tips. I... <laughs> I don't like felt tips. I just find brush tips. It's way easier to apply and get that super, super thin, crisp wing if that's what you're into. And then for the gel eyeliner, don't sleep on Ulta Beauty's in-house brand. I've said this many times before. Their face palettes, the baked ones, are so underrated and so good. And I do want to recommend their gel eyeliners. They make my favorite chocolate colored eyeliner it's really hard to find brown eyeliners that are not basically black and they have one that's in the shade chocolate that is a deep brown but it's like warm enough to actually show up as a brown it's not like a black brown which i really appreciate and these ones the texture does remind me of the urban decay 24 7 ones but they're not as long wearing and they don't like set down as hard as those ones but when you first apply them, they do feel super creamy and glidey like the Urban Decay ones. And I really, really like the colors that the Ulta Beauty collection offers. For mascara, I'm going to start off with the only one that I have currently in my collection. And this is my favorite mascara of all time. I also did feature this in last week's video. And it is the IT Cosmetics Lash Blowout. The biggest con is the price. This is like $27, which is literally ridiculous to me. It's, I don't know if it's because of the packaging. It's just a little bit more um, elevated than a normal mascara packaging, but $27 is like insane. So the last time, um, this one that I got, I did get it on sale. And that is why I like Ulta better is because their point system, their reward system is a thousand times better then Sephora, just like Sephora, it's free to sign up, but you just get way more perks. You accumulate points way, way quicker that you can cash out and use to take off money for your orders in store and online. And they just offer you coupons all the time. Like they always have some kind of coupon on the app or on their website. This is just an all-in-one for me. It is one of the only mascaras I can use on my top and bottom lashes. It is the one that I'm wearing today. And it gives you that super volumized fluffy look, very, very similar to the Rare Beauty Mascara. So if you like the Rare Beauty Mascara, you would like this as well. But I find with the Rare Beauty, I can't put it on my lower lashes because it's too wet. This one is a drier consistency, which I do prefer drier consistencies out of the gate with mascaras. And this one provides that for me. And the next two... I've spoken about many, many times, and if you watch any of my videos, last year I'm probably using both of these, if not at least one of these mascaras. First is the e.l.f. Lash & Roll. That is one of my favorite mascaras and my favorite drugstore mascara. It's my favorite mascara I've ever used for the lower lashes. I don't really love it for the top lashes because it's a super natural, like lengthened, separated kind of look. But if that is what you like, if you want something more natural that's not going to smudge, even if you sweat, that one is just incredible. And Milani Anti-Gravity. I was going back and forth between putting this one or the Flower Beauty Warrior Princess, but I went with Milani just because the Flower Beauty one takes a while to dry, and if you're not careful, you can get smudging um, on your lid or underneath your eyes with that one. And this Milani one, it is a little bit hard to remove. Definitely the hardest to remove out of the ones I'm talking about, and it is a drier formula, but it is just so long wearing and it does give you a ton of volume at the base of your lashes. It just makes your lashes look super thick. So that's why I decided to go with the Milani over the Flower Beauty one. For false lashes, if you're wondering why I'm not going to suggest my Ardell lashes that I love and I've been talking about for like years at this point, it's because... They're not available on Ulta right now. I find with Ardell, like, they just have styles come and go. 
um, in store and online at Ulta. I'm not sure why, um, but sometimes they have my favorites and sometimes they don't. But unfortunately, they don't have the ones that you guys know I love. Of course, I recommend those, but you can't get them at Ulta, which is the point of this video. So that's why I'm not mentioning my Ardell ones. But the ones that are available at Ulta are the Kiss Lashes. Ardell is definitely superior in my opinion. But I am wearing the Kiss Bare Affair. Those are the lashes that I'm wearing right now. They come in this four pack. I also really like the Pompadour pack also comes in a four pack but the pompadour ones are more like thick at the base so if you want something more dramatic than these ones because these ones are super like natural the pompadour ones are my next recommendation um, i just don't currently have those in my collection right now but these kiss lashes are one of the easiest lashes to apply the band is invisible very similar to ardell i do think ardell um holds the shape way better than kiss lashes if i'm just being honest so that's why ardell is just always going to be number one for me and also i got this impress press on falsies clusters so these are the wispy ones and this is the refill pack and these are the ones that already have adhesive on them so they're not these ones which these are the false scara um, bare essentials kit so this one comes with a couple of them and then it comes with the glue I don't like this I I don't I don't recommend this um, this one is the one where you have to put this adhesive at the base of your lashes and then you stick these on meanwhile these ones come with adhesive already and it's so freaking easy just to take one of these with a little tweezer or a lash applicator and just put them underneath your lashes on hold for like a couple of seconds and then just let go and like squeeze your natural lashes and these together. So if you struggle with strip lashes, which I completely understand, like I still struggle and I've been applying them for years. So if you struggle, I highly recommend these impress press on ones they go underneath the lashes so these ones look like lash extensions and they are unclockable if you have trouble with strip lashes just looking like strip lashes like if you just have a hard time making them look seamless and getting them in line with your actual lash line go ahead and go with these ones um i would say use a coupon with these because I feel like these are a bit expensive for what it is. I believe this is like $15. And you do get like quite a bit. Like I obviously I haven't gone through all of them. Uh, one con I will say is that I feel like after three times the adhesive just wears away. And I have had to like throw away quite a bit as you can tell. Like there's a couple missing just because the adhesive does wear off. I have several foundations to share with you guys so starting off with the one i'm wearing this is my favorite foundation of last year and it is the rem beauty sweetener foundation this is also in my project pan it is a full glam foundation i feel like very full glam today partly because of this it is super full coverage it is a natural kind of finish. It really just depends on how you prep your skin. This is the kind of foundation I do highly recommend to set like completely because if you take your finger and you like press and lift off and you haven't set it yet, some of it does come off so that could be a con or a deal breaker for you so I just want to put that out there but pros of this product is it just looks beautiful and i have dry acne prone skin for reference and even after eight hours this does so well in my problem area and my smile lines this is where i get like the cracking and the dryness and around my mouth as well this never looks like that even if i don't wear a primer underneath it just maintains such a beautiful finish throughout the day and the shade ranges are just impeccable especially for deep dark skin tones deep rich skin tones like if you've been struggling if you've been wanting um, a foundation that actually matches you and to actually have options definitely look into Aryan beauty i did wear medium 7n today 
and this is the best foundation match I've ever tried. And then the other foundation that has the best shade range is the About Face Performer Foundation. This has beat my Rem Beauty foundation, has become my new favorite foundation, and the shade range is impeccable as well. Both of these have excellent shades for olive undertones. This one is so skin-like and undetectable, like it's just amazing and I actually prefer to wear this without a primer. Um, this is one of those foundations that does not work with the e.l.f. power grip so that's why I just forgo primer and honestly it doesn't need primer. Like it wears that well and when you blend this out it looks so undetectable like it doesn't look like foundation. Next is a newer favorite but I, I can't stop wearing this like I just always want to wear this and it is the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Perfector Essence. I have mine in medium 40. I did wear this in a recent video. If you are a skin tint girly, if you just want a natural tint, if you don't like too much but you just want just enough, just like a little bit of something, this is for you. But you do have to be willing to put in just a little bit more effort, definitely more effort than any of these other foundations in terms of application because you really have to work in and break down these pigment pearls in this foundation. But to me, it's absolutely worth it because similarly to the About Face one, this is so skin-like. It is so glowy. It gives you glass skin. I don't really feel the need to set this, especially for dry skin. I think you're going to love this. Of course, if you have like acne, discoloration, it's not going to cover that. And then lastly, this is an old favorite and it is the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Nude Glow. Uh, this shade is a little bit too light for me. This is in medium. I think on the website this is titled Neutral Medium. This is also one of the best wear wearing foundations I've ever tried and it is the best, still the best, for my problem areas where I get cracking, where my smile lines, like where stuff, where foundation starts to settle around the nose and then these lines. Oily skin, I, I would just skip out on this one. I do see that they just released like a matte version um, so that might be for you but if you have dry to normal skin I think you would love this it does have SPF it doesn't really smell like SPF it's not offensive it's very very subtle and it doesn't linger on the face this just has a beautiful glowy finish that's not greasy but it just makes you look super fresh and healthy for concealer, I have two concealers that I would only use for spot concealing and then one for underneath the eyes. So starting off with one of my favorite drugstore concealers, it is the e.l.f. Camo Concealer. This is the hydrating formula. Um, this shade is a little too light for me. I'll go ahead and swatch it anyway. If you're able to swatch these um, in store, I don't know if they have testers. They might have testers, um, don't quote me on that, but I would definitely try to swatch before because this formula does oxidize. This is the shade Medium Peach. I just applied like a fresh coat of this and you can definitely tell. So this is the fresh coat and this is after it dries down. So you can see it does definitely oxidize. Nothing too offensive, like nothing too intense, but... I feel like this is a self-setting concealer. I honestly do prefer to wear this without setting it. Otherwise, it can look a bit too heavy underneath the eyes. Even though it says hydrating, like this is still pretty intense and full, full, full coverage. And I don't let this concealer sit. A lot of the times I do, but I don't let this one sit. I would go ahead and just blend that one right away but it is great for longevity. If you want to spot conceal or if you just want to wear like concealer as foundation like around the face, not underneath the eyes, I would definitely go for either the NYX Pro Fix Sticks. This shade range is incredible. It's only $9. It's super, super creamy, super full coverage. I love this for covering up acne, redness, any kind of spots, and also the Aryan Beauty Sweetener Concealer, 
I also have this in medium 7N, and if you were wondering, the concealers match the foundation shades. They're exactly the same, so I actually used to wear this as foundation, so if you don't like the Rem Beauty foundation, if you want something that just like grips better to the skin, I actually do recommend going in with this concealer as foundation. Next is powder, and I only have two powders, and they're both pressed, and they just both happen to be banana powders. The, I still haven't found a loose setting powder available at Ulta that I like. The first one is the NYX HD Finishing Powder in Banana. I don't currently have that one, but I used to use that one back in the day, and that is so freaking good for the price. It is like a creamy texture. It's not too thick, but it is a very like creamy. Like when you feel between your fingers, it feels super nice. It's very flattering, especially if you have dry under eyes like me. And it is definitely creamier and like thicker in consistency than this other recommendation. This is the Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. I didn't put any um, underneath my eyes, but I do want to put a little bit on one side just to show the difference. This one, the Essence one, is harder pressed than the next one, so when you dip in your brush or powder puff or whatever you're using, this one doesn't have, like, any kind of kickback. You don't see any powder lifting up, but the next one, you do definitely see powder kicking up. Here's the difference with the Essence one and without the Essence one. I, I definitely see a difference. For highlighter, I'm going to start off with the one that I don't have, but I used to eat this up, especially in college, and it is the Essence Pure Nude. If you are a type of person that doesn't like like a sh super blinding, like shimmery kind of highlighter, I'm thinking like the Smashbox X Becca ones, or the Rare Beauty ones, or even like the REM Beauty ones, like if that's not your vibe, Definitely go for Essence Pure Nude. They do have two or three shades. It's like a brightening kind of pearlescent. It's not shimmery or shiny, but if you just want more of a subtle kind of glow, definitely, definitely go for that one. The next two I do have in my collection, and it is the Smashbox X Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in Champagne Pop. This is the mini size classic Becca packaging that we all know and love. I know this looks super small, but actually this has the same amount of product as the Rare Beauty highlighters, the powder highlighters. And this one's 18 and I believe the Rare Beauty ones are at least $20. They might even be 22. So this is actually more bang for your buck. This is Champagne Pop. These are just so smoothing and if you don't want something that's as intense as the Rare Beauty highlight um, but you want a powder highlight definitely this one is just still like a timeless formula. Next is the cream highlight that comes in this NYX Wonder Stick and this is in the shade Medium. This is the highlight that I'm wearing today and here is a swatch of it. My favorite way to apply this is just going in with my fingers, warming the product up, and then tapping and blending out with my fingers. But I also have tried this just going directly and swiping on, and it doesn't lift the product that you have underneath. This is that shade for the medium, so there's the highlight and there's that contour bronzer shade that it comes with. I do find that it does take um, more pressure and like effort with the brush to blend it out. Um, it doesn't like set down and dry and it's never patchy um, but definitely in terms of like other cream bronzers I'm thinking of like the LYS one, the new Too Faced one, the Milk Makeup um, bronzer and contour sticks like those ones are very slippy and just super creamy and emollient. This is definitely of like a firmer texture but it's still like super easy to blend out. Another cream bronzer kind of formula that I recommend is the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Bronzer. This is my favorite drugstore bronzer, um, but I will say Ulta Beauty in certain products, they only have limited shades of those products, and that doesn't necessarily mean that that brand only has those shades. A lot of the time, 
in the case of this one, they only have like four shades of this luminous bronzer. But if you go on the e.l.f. website, e.l.f. has like at least 10 shades. This is the longest wearing cream bronzer product I've ever tried and it's not shimmery. Um, it's more like a satin finish. I don't know if I would say luminous because when I think of luminous, I'm thinking of like dewy and this is definitely not dewy. Kind of like the next one, you have to go in like harder into the pan to pick up product, but this is so long wearing. It is so easy to apply, very beginner friendly. And I do prefer these way, way more than the putty bronzers. Even if you have oily skin, I would still go for the luminous formula just because it's creamier and just easier to apply. In terms of the shades available on Ulta's website, this REM Beauty Hypernova Bronzer has the best shade range available out of the three that I'm mentioning. I did top off the NYX Wonder Stick with a little bit of this because I felt like I just needed a little bit more warmth to the face. So I did, so I do have like a light veil of this over the skin. This is extremely easy to work with. They are pigmented, but even if you go in with a lot of pigment, it is super easy and quick to diffuse. Not hard pressed at all, but also not powdery, just like the perfect consistency kind of powder bronzer. Now for blush, I have quite a few recommendations. Um, so this first formula is definitely the one with the best colors for deep to rich skin tones because these are super pigmented. And I'm talking about the e.l.f. Liquid Camo Blushes. I just love these. Like, they killed it with these. I honestly don't use my Rare Beauty ones. They do have, like, a glow to them. And um, so if you don't like a, like, a glowy or, like, natural kind of blush then these are not going to be for you these aren't like glittery and they're not like overly dewy like they're just right and i have three shades so this bright pink one is pinky promise this one in the center is my favorite color and this is dusty rose and then this bronzy one is bronze bombshell the essence pure nude big blushes this is what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing the shade Berry Cheeks, and it's a beautiful kind of glow. It's giving hourglass. There are two cons with this product. When you first start using them, it's like they have like a, like a shimmery overspray on the top that you have to break through before you get to the more like polished, pearlized kind of finish. And also, I have two shades, but these like look the same to me. Like a lot of the shades... Like, swash, they look like they have, like, a little bit of a difference, but then on the cheeks, they literally look the same. So, honestly, I would just pick one. And then my last two recommendations are both blurring um, pressed powder blushes. So, I have the Too Faced Cloud Crush Blurring Blushes, and then I have the Aryan Beauty Hypernova Satin Matte Blushes. You definitely don't need both of these. These are so similar that it really only comes down to like which colors you like best. Really the only difference in formula that I have found is when you go into the pan itself. These ones in particular, these Rem Beauty ones, I do find like I have to really like go in with my brush um, because they are like more firmly pressed. But these ones are definitely more blurring in my opinion than the Too Faced ones. Another difference, which makes sense because Too Faced scents like everything that they sell, like every product they have has a scent. And they all have like a very like, it's like a cinnamon roll, like sugary vanilla kind of scent. It's quite pleasant. So I swatched all four of those blushes. So starting off with Too Faced, this is Watermelon Rain. Then we have Velvet Crush. And then right next to it, I swatched Rosé on Mars by R.E.M. Beauty because I find that these two are extremely similar, that they look exactly the same on the skin. So again, Watermelon Rain, Velvet Crush, Rose on Mars, and then this last one is Skinny Dipped by R.E.M. Beauty. Next is eyebrows. So two of these products I am currently wearing today. So for my brow gel, I went in with the e.l.f. Brow Lift. It just really lays down my hairs flat. I will say it's actually not the strongest hold out of any kind of like pomade or brow gel that I've ever had. But considering 
it's from the drugstore and it's only six dollars like it doesn't really have to be the strongest hold for me to be satisfied with this product and it doesn't leave like a white cast and to fill in any of the little holes that I have in my brows after I laid down the brows with the brow lift I went in with the NYX lift and snatch eyebrow pen now I am not going to repurchase this because in my opinion this is not ideal for someone with thick eyebrows like myself I definitely think this is better for people who have sparse eyebrows who need pigmentation this definitely has a better shade range than my other recommendation which is the Milani eyebrow tint pen that is my favorite because it's less pigmented for so for someone like me who doesn't need a lot of pigmentation I just need like very subtle coloring to fill in the little gaps that I have I definitely prefer the Milani one and the Milani one is even more long wearing than this and this next one is extremely long wearing so much so like it's kind of hard to take off at the end of the day like, even today I feel like my brows are like pretty <laughs> pretty intense and for setting spray I only have one setting spray I was gonna put two but Apparently, the one that I was going to put in here either got discontinued or Ulta is just waiting on a restock. Like, I, I don't know what the deal is. But it is from Ulta Beauty's in-house collection and it is their wannabe free makeup setting spray. I did apply this today. And this is their Control Shine, it says on the bottle. So this is more of like a mattifying setting spray. But it's like a satin matte. It's not like suction all of the moisture from your face and feel tight the reason that it's not is because this is alcohol free and Ulta Beauty's collection goes on sale all the time so definitely like just wait for a sale like they go on sale constantly so you'll only pay like three dollars for this tiny one and like six dollars for the big one and lastly is lips and I have quite a few recommendations. I'm a lippy girl and I got something for every kind of category. So starting off with lip liner. I want to give a shout out to these by Seishu and they are the lip liner stay in, stay in, stay in, peel off lip liner tattoo. If you're someone that really likes stains, um, someone that is like outside a lot, if you like sweat a lot, if you're just like licking your lips or like drinking a lot and you're concerned about your lip liner or your lip color in general like fading and you don't like to retouch or you just don't want to worry about that these are freaking awesome i do think that you only get like six hours of wear with this and i definitely recommend applying this twice so basically they come out looking super freaking dark and when you apply it to your lips, they look like almost black and you leave it on for up to 20 minutes and then you peel it off and it leaves the stain. I will say when you're applying these, I would not recommend getting close to the inside part of your lip because no matter how long I let it dry and peel off, like if I get too close to the inner rim, like it won't peel off and it'll just stick there and you'll just have like a little like black looking or like red looking piece like on the inside even if you don't want to like line your lips if you just want to stain these ones are really really good and they do go on sale quite often as well the other two lip liner recommendations this one i'm wearing today this is the rem beauty lip liner in the shade eq this one i feel like a lot of people won't like because it is like a thick texture and like when you apply this one it does have like quite like a tug to it so i feel like that's going to definitely sway a lot of people from this one but i really love the color and this is one of my top three longest wearing lip liner and then the nyx line loud i freaking love this shade specifically in sassy i wore it the other day it's become one of my favorite lip liners i also have global citizen which is basically a dupe or the same it's not a dupe because they're the same price but it's very close to about face cradled so this is sassy and then this one is global citizen 
These are in my top three as well for longest wearing lip liners and out of the three recommendations, this has the best shade range for super pale, medium, all the way to deep rich. Um, if you like pinks, if you like oranges, if you like like weird funky colors, like they have it all. So NYX always has like an impeccable shade range. Next category for lips is lipstick. And this one from AF94. So this is Halsey's more affordable brand. So it's like About Face's younger sister. And this is their Matte Brat Lip Crayon in Soda Popped. Honestly, out of like all of these, um, I don't really like the shade range. Like this is the only color in Soda Popped. Then we have the Rem Beauty Matte Lipsticks. Now these are like the regular bullet lipsticks. These are not like the skinny bullet lipsticks that they have. And I do prefer this over the skinny bullet ones only because I'm just really into like that velvety matte texture. And I've said so many times before, like Ariane Beauty's lip products, like, oh my God, they're just to die for. If you know what MAC lipsticks smell like, that iconic, like sweet vanilla kind of MAC lipstick scent, they perfectly replicated it, but like made it better. Like if you can imagine, like it's like even stronger and just more intoxicating. This one is in the shade Bubbly. It's the least long wearing out of these three formulas that I'm going to mention, but it doesn't like completely wipe off. Like I feel like a lot of lipsticks just like, once you eat something or like drink something, they just completely disappear. It's definitely not like that. And then I have two of these O Face lipsticks. First of all, this packaging, for nine, $9, mind you. I know that's like expensive for e.l.f., but in this economy, like no. Um, a magnetic closure for $9. Like I just, I just think that's like incredible. So I have two shades, no doubt. And then this one is Drive. I love this color. Like if you're looking for like a more reddish kind of deeper brown, like I, I just love this color, especially for fall. And then No Doubt, like, as you can tell, I just love a nude. But this No Doubt is more of, like, that yellowy, like, more neutral kind of nude compared to these colors are obviously more pinky leaning. Next is lip oil. One is the e.l.f. Glow Reviver lip oils and the other is the NYX fat oils. The NYX ones definitely have way more pigment. I have Supermodel, which is this more pinky one, but my favorite one is Mist Call. This was my favorite lip color of last summer. I wore this like every day, I feel like. I do think that the NYX one is more like black girl friendly, if that makes sense. I do prefer the e.l.f. ones. I just think this is more of a lip oil. These are basically a lip gloss and they are like thicker these ones just have a little bit more of like give to them and I do think these are more hydrating so I do prefer the e.l.f. ones. Last category and we are out of here. Okay, so I did mention the Undone Beauty glosses. They used to be called Big Papa but now they're just called Papa Gloss so I don't know if like was Big Papa like controversial like is that why they changed it? I don't know. But on Ulta Beauty they do have limited shades on the site. So they do have more shades than Ulta has to offer and unfortunately the shades that they don't have are the ones that actually have pigmentation and differentiation. All the shades that they have, this one is in passion fruit. Like they all look clear. I would just go by like the flavor. So this one's passion fruit. I also have tried peach and honey. So just go by like which flavor you would prefer more. But these are still, this is the most hydrating lip gloss I've ever tried. This is basically a liquefied lip balm. I honestly just wear this by itself all the time. And my last recommendation, these are plumping, but plumping in like a cooling minty way, not like a burning cinnamony way. And these are the Aryan Beauty On Your Collar Plumping Lip Glosses. I have three shades for a reason. I used to have four, but I decluttered one because I didn't really like the color on me. But I have three for a reason. This is one of my favorite lip gloss formulas. Obviously, that's why I'm putting it in here. Today, I'm wearing, on top of that Aryan Beauty lip liner, I'm wearing Thank You Next. They said these were limited edition, but these are still available on Ulta. So if you want this shade, you can get this at Ulta. 
These aren't watery. They're more thick. Like, they have more of, like, a viscosity to it. So, they're not, like, runny or anything. Like, a lot of lip glosses are. But they're not, like, sticky. Like, they're just somewhere in the middle. I think it's very interesting. They make your lips look like they have, like, this coating on it. But, like, in a good way. These don't hurt at all. Like, the sensation is, like, barely there. And that wraps up my updated cruelty-free makeup guide for Ulta. I hope this was helpful. You can let me know that you liked this video, that you found it helpful, or that you just enjoyed watching by leaving a like and making sure to subscribe. And I am sending you guys so, so much love and light. And I will see you in the next one.